What is up guys? Hope you're all doing awesome. In this episode, I'm going to introduce you to AI. And by the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of how it works, as well as a patrolling NPC, which can patrol around in whatever path you set for it. In the next few episodes, I'm going to dive deep and give you guys a full rundown of how to produce AI. So by the end of it, you can go out and produce any AI you want. We'll be covering AI detection, attacking and combat. So be sure to stay tuned. But before we get into that, we got some legends to shout out. Trip, Kiwi Dog, Legion, Edward, Rupesh and Jack. Thank you guys for joining the Patreon team and thank you to all my Patreons for the support. I try to help all my subscribers, but if you would like access to some of the exclusive rewards seen on screen now, please check out my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, let's get into this video. So, like I said, over the next few episodes, I'm going to be teaching you guys some awesome things to make AI do. But to make AI do things like draw and sheath its sword and attack the player with combo attacks, we're actually going to be duplicating the third person character we made over the last few episodes. So you will need a third person character which can draw and sheath his weapon and attack via events in the character BP. So I've got a couple of options for you. Option A is to download the project I'm using right now. I'll leave a link in the description. Option B is to watch tutorials 18 through to 18.4 to create your very own third person attacking character. I'd highly recommend this option as it will catch you up to speed with animation blueprinting and blending animations. Or option C is to watch this tutorial and learn about AI but implement your own draw and sheath weapon and NPC attacks when it comes to it. So when you've decided, the first thing we're going to do is actually set the area we want our AI to be able to walk around in. And we do this with a nav mesh bounds volume. So on the left, type in nav into your search bar and drag and drop it in and scale it up to fit your area. If you press P, you can toggle the bounds to see where the NPC can move, green areas being accessible and red areas being not. Now we need to create a few things. So let's create a folder called NPC by right clicking new folder NPC. Then we're going to make an AI controller. So right click blueprint type in AI controller in the class, bring that in and call that NPC underscore AI. Then we're going to right click again under AI, bring in a blackboard, call this NPC underscore blackboard. Then right click again under AI, we're going to bring in a behavior tree and call this NPC underscore BT. So what do all these things do? The AI controller, just like the player controller, gives the NPC certain properties. The behavior tree basically gives the NPC tasks to do. Do this, then this, etc. And the blackboard basically just holds variables for the behavior tree. We can set variables in the blackboard, which will then change what tasks the NPC gets given to do. Now we're going to create our NPC. So duplicate your third person character, call it NPC. Then duplicate your third person anim graph, call it NPC underscore anim. Open up your anim graph in the event graph. Just make sure if you're casting to your third person character, you change this and everything it's connected to, to your NPC. So cast to NPC. Now open up your NPC BP. We can start by deleting the camera and the camera boon. Select your mesh and change the anim class to our newly created animation blueprint. With the NPC self selected under pawn, for your AI controller class, we're gonna select the AI controller we just created. And we're also gonna uncheck the use controller rotation your, then select character movement, type in rotation, then check use controller desired rotation and put the Z rotation rate to 200. Now we've given the NPC an alternate way of rotating. As it isn't being controlled by a keyboard and mouse, we need to pick a method of rotating it. The rotation rate and these two options can be played around with, so if you're not happy with the way your NPC is rotating, have a go at varying them. In our event graph, even though there's a load of nodes we don't actually need, we're just going to leave it as it is for now and come back to it later. 
For now, let's introduce you to the behavior tree. So double click to open it up. And welcome guys to the behavior tree. It may look intimidating at first, but trust me when I say it is so easy and fun to use. Props to Unreal for this one. So as I mentioned before, a behavior tree is used to tell the NPC what to do. And it does this quite simply by putting tasks in an order. So if you pull off the route, you'll see we have access to a selector and a sequence node. I'll put the official description of what these nodes are on the screen now, but both these nodes are very similar. To put it simply, you wanna use a sequence node when you want to go through multiple tasks sequentially, like so, and a selector node to select between certain sequences. Don't worry, the more you use them, the more they will make sense. Okay, cool. So let's bring in a selector coming off the root. Now let's bring in two sequence nodes coming off this. So you'll notice a little number by each node. And this is the order in which they will be run. It goes from left to right. So if we swap these around, you'll notice the numbers also swap over. So to get the NPC to patrol around, we need to tell him what to do step by step via tasks. So let's break down what we're asking the NPC to do. As we want our NPC to move somewhere, the first thing we need to do is find the location we want to go to. So this makes the first task getting a location vector. And next, we want to send our NPC to that location. So the second task would be sending our NPC blueprint to the location vector we found in task one. And that's all the tasks we need. But before we can start creating them, we need two things. First, we need a location to actually send the NPC to. And second, we need a variable to store that location vector inside. So, like I said at the start, the blackboard is used to store variables. So, click on the blackboard button in the top right. Create a new key as a vector and call this target location. Okay, now let's generate a location to store into this value. And there are loads of different ways of getting a location. But the way I'm going to teach you guys today is through a spline. So right click, blueprint class, actor, and call this spline pathway. Double click to open it up. Now add a component, spline. Now you can create a pathway that you want your NPC to follow. You can do this by alt dragging the spline points to generate new ones. When you're done, in the details section, check closed loop. Next, bring in a static mesh cube and set its collision in the details to no collision. Now into the event graph, create a timeline node. Double click to open it up, then add a float track, shift click to add a point and put it at value zero, time zero. Then shift click to add another point and put it at value one, time 10. Then at the top, set your total time to 10. This is how long it will take for your NPC to do a loop. This might need to be adjusted depending on your program. Now back into the event graph, control drag in your cube and set world location and connect this up to the timeline. These next nodes, I don't want you guys to overthink, but they're basically just creating a moving location which goes around the spline. So control drag in our spline, pull off this and get spline length. Then bring in a lerp with A being zero and B being connected to the spline length and the alpha being connected to the timeline. Control W to duplicate your spline node and pull off the new one and get location at distance along spline. Set this to world and then plug the lerp into the distance and plug the location into the set world location node. To finish up, I'm gonna put the finished from the timeline into a delay by holding D and click and then loop it back into the play from start. This means when the NPC goes around one time, He'll wait for a delay and then it'll go around again. So now we have a cube which will move around our spline over time. So we don't actually need the cube to move around the spline. It's just a reference so we know the location. We just need the actual location value. So off the get location at distance along spline, let's promote this to a variable and call it location. Okay, cool. So now we have a location and a place to store it in the blackboard. So back into our behavior tree, let's do the tasks. So remember, we need two tasks, one task to get the spline location reference and one task to send the NPC to that location. So if we right click, we can see an entire list of tasks already built into the program. But for this job, we want to create our own. So at the top, we're going to click new task, then select BTT task base. 
This is just the default name for a new task. So on your content browser, let's rename this to Get Spline Location. Now, for every single task blueprint you create, you will need two nodes, an event receive execute AI, which is run when the task is called in the behavior tree. So bring that in and a finish execute node, which basically ends the line. So bring that in. Make sure success is checked because otherwise the task won't be sent through. So the way tasks work is by passing information between the NPC blueprint, the AI controller and the blackboard. So you may be wondering if we can't communicate with our spline location, how are we going to get the location from it? And that my friends is by passing it through the NPC. So let's quickly do that. So into our NPC blueprint, we're going to create a new variable, call it spline path ref with the variable type as spline path or whatever you called your spline blueprint and check instance editable. Now into the content browser, drag both your NPC and spline path into the level. And with the NPC selected in your details, you should now be able to select your spline path. If you can't see anything, make sure you've compiled your NPC. Okay, cool. We now have a reference to our spline path so we can get the location through the NPC. So let's jump back into our task. Let's bring in a cast to NPC node using the controlled pawn as the reference. As we made a variable reference to our spline path in our NPC, off the cast to NPC, we can get the spline pathway ref. Then off this, we can get the location variable we made in the spline path. So now we just need to send this information over to our blackboard and we can communicate with our blackboard via a variable. So let's create a new variable and call it bb underscore ref with the variable type blackboard key selector. Check instance editable. Now we can get and send variables to and from the blackboard. So control drag in our blackboard variable. Then off this, we're gonna bring in a set blackboard value as vector. Then connect our location up to this. And this task is done. We're getting our spline location through the NPC and we're sending that over to the blackboard, which will update our target location vector in our blackboard. Now into the content browser, duplicate our task and call our new one, send to location. Double click to open this up, then delete everything except for our blackboard reference and the two essential nodes. Now we're gonna retrieve the location we just set. So off the blackboard, get blackboard value as vector, then bring in a simple move to location node. Connect the vector into the goal and the owner controller into the node controller. And that's this task done. So we retrieved the location, then sent the NPC to that location through the AI controller. Now, back into our behavior tree, we can now bring in our two tasks, get spline location on the left, then send to location on the right. For both of these tasks, in the details, make sure BB is set to target location. This means when we're setting and getting the value in the tasks, they will be setting and getting the target location variable. So I actually forgot to mention, the behavior tree fires off a similar way to an event tick. So although our task gets a location, then sends our NPC to that location, this is being fired off constantly. So as our spline location moves, the NPC is constantly being updated on where to go. And the very last thing we need to do, although we haven't done anything in the AI controller yet, as we're using it to send the NPC to a location, we need to link it up with the behavior tree. So into your content browser, double click and open it up and create a run behavior tree node on the begin play. Then put in your behavior tree. So depending on how fast your spline moves or your mannequin speed or the size of your spline track, your mannequin might move too quickly or too slow for the path. So simply adjust one of the things I just mentioned to tweak this. And that's it guys. Let me give you a super quick rundown. A behavior tree holds tasks and fires off different ones depending on certain variables. A blackboard holds variables for the behavior tree and tasks. We used the blackboard in this tutorial to create a target location variable. Tasks fire off from the behavior tree and makes the NPC do things and communicates information like variables between the blackboard, NPC and AI controller. In this tutorial, we had two tasks, 
One set the target location, and the other used that target location to move the NPC. The AI controller controls certain NPC properties. Although we didn't blueprint this in this episode, we used the simple move to location node, which was passed from the task to the controller to the NPC. Don't worry, we go into the AI controller in more depth in the next few episodes. We also used a spline to create a constantly moving location value. This location was passed to the NPC, then passed to the task to be used as our target location variable. And that is everything guys. If you would like to have access to the next episode this very second, hit up my Patreon to get early access to my tutorials. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.